New game is good. Opening is going to blow me away. Yes to the new game question. Okay. I'm ready. Are you all ready? I'm ready. New game. Oh, here. Import ME1 character, I'm guessing, is what we want to do. I'm clicking it. Choose Shepard. That's us. Intro's really something. All right. We're going in. Veteran, off, on, on, on. Yep. Wow, just, just the fact that it's a new color palette is throwing me off. Service history. Oh, shoot. Okay, guess we're not looking. <laughs> Did I mess up already? Did I already mess up? I was trying to get into, go into the things. <laughs> Are we good? Do I need to restart? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Shepard did everything right. More than we could have hoped for. Commander Shepard uncovered the truth. And still, it's not enough. We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. But they're sending her to fight Geth. Geth? We both know they're not the real threat. The Reapers are still out there. And it's up to us to stop them. The Council will never trust Cerberus. They'll never accept our help, even after everything humanity has accomplished. But Shepard, they'll follow her. She's a hero, a bloody icon. But she's just one woman. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. Then see to it that we don't lose her. Whoa, those eyes. One month after the devastating Gath attack on the Citadel, humanity seized political control of the galaxy. Now the human-led council is forced to respond to evidence that the Reapers, enormous machines that eradicated all advanced civilizations every 50,000 years, have returned. To quell the rumors, the council has sent Commander Shepard and the Normandy to- No! Who reads that fast? Hey, there's our ship. Disengaging FTL drives. Emission sinks active. Board is green. We are running silent. We're wasting our time. Four days searching up and down this sector and we haven't found any sign of Geth activity. Three ships went missing here in the past month. Something happened to them. My money's on slavers. The Terminus system is crawling with them. Picking up something on the long-range scanner. Unidentified vessel. Hmm. Looks like a cruiser. Doesn't match any known signatures. Cruiser is changing course. Now on intercept trajectory. Can't be. Stealth systems are engaged. There's no way a Geth ship could possibly... It's not the Geth. Brace for evasive maneuvers! Uh-oh. What? Uh. Kinetic barriers down. Multiple hull breaches. Weapons offline. Somebody get that fire out! Beacon is ready for launch. Will the Alliance get here in time? They'll be here. They gosh darn well better. <laughs> oh god, it's starting. Oh no. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my goodness. We're Shepard doing all this asleep. I don't know. We were doing something. This is fine. <laughs> Kaiden's here. I'm not doing this just so they can find our frozen corpses. Get everyone onto the escape shuttles. Joker's still in the cockpit. He won't abandon ship. I'm not leaving either. There's no time to argue. I gave you an order. Get to the damn 
damn shuttles. I'll haul Joker's crippled ass out of here. Commander! Get the hell out of here! Uh oh. Violent. Oh no, our ship's going down. Oh God! Go to the cockpit, Joker. We're coming. This is as fast as I can go. Come on, Joker. We oh, he's still alive. No, I won't abandon the Normandy. I can still save her. Don't throw your life away. Don't be stupid. The Normandy's dead, just like us if we don't get the hell out of here. No, we just have to... Oh, we gotta go. The end. <laughs> The council did die, yep. Wow. Space fireworks F bad ending? No. <laughs> Mass Effect Genesis is an interactive comic that summarizes the events of Mass Effect 1. Would you like to review the story so far? I know we just finished, but this sounds like it could be fun. Should we do it? Should we do this? Bad ending? <laughs> Thanks for playing Mass Effect 2. It'd be perfect for two hours. People were really upset paying $59.99 for this. Mass Effect 3 is fake. I'm so confused. <laughs> we became a comet. What a banger opening. That was crazy. They really cranked up the intensity so far. Shepard died. Deserved ending for Renegade ending? No. So you call an explosive star. Absolutely. It's like 15 minutes long. Do it. Do it. Everyone says do it. Do it. It's fun. You recommend I do it? We have 15 minutes to spare, yeah. Pens out. It would be cool too if this comic kind of like plays it out the way 
based on the decisions that you make. So it's like dynamic. Part of the experience and you only get one first place. Oh, good point. Very good point. Yep. So Ruthless the Galaxy said, nope, and just killed you. <laughs> it's karma. Someone said it earlier, but yes, it's karma. <laughs> poor Joker, poor Jenkins. He might be alive. He may have survived. We don't know. We can recap where Choose went wrong in Mass Effect 1. <laughs> it is fun. Comic is how PS3 players back in the day got to pick choices for Mass Effect 1 when they played Mass Effect 2. Part of the experience, okay. Interactive backstory comic. Wow. I don't usually read comics ever, Just so... A routine mission. Why do they always say that before a mission? Of course it's routine. You haven't done anything yet. It's everything that happens along the way. The choices you make. The paths you choose. That turn the routine... into anything but. Of course, that's how it started. A routine mission. Answering a distress call. And look where that got me. We were testing out the Normandy, Captain Anderson's new ship, when the distress call came in. An Alliance patrol on Eden Prime had been attacked. They'd seen something they couldn't explain. And whatever it was, it was massive. I hit the ground with my lieutenant, Caden Alenko. A good kid, loyal, by the book, with a talent for biotics. We came across the lone survivor of the patrol, Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams, No mention of Jenkins. Soldier to the core. Tough. Disciplined. Ready to take on whatever came her way. Ashley joined up with us and took us to the spot where she lost her squad. That's when we saw it. A ship. Like nothing I'd ever seen. It was massive. Scorching the colony and everything around it as it blasted away. We followed the path of destruction to an artifact. A beacon left by a long dead race called the Protheans. The colony had dug it up and whoever attacked them had tried to take it. Lieutenant Alenko made the mistake of getting too close. It hit him with some type of energy. I grabbed him and threw him out of the way. That's when it hit me. Hard. Every muscle in my body went rigid. I couldn't move. Could barely breathe. Everything went black. And then I saw something. A vision. A dream. A nightmare. By the time I woke up, we were halfway to the Citadel on our way to meet the Council. I was expected to explain what I'd seen. Anderson came along. So did Udina, our political representative on the Citadel. With those two heavyweights, it seemed reasonable we could persuade the Council that the ship we'd seen was a potential threat. As was the individual behind the attacks. The main suspect for the Eden Prime Massacre was a Turian specter named Saren. He'd been seen by one of the survivors from the colony at Eden Prime, and there was some evidence to suggest that the ship was connected to Saren. But even Udina's pointed accusations weren't enough to convince the Council. They just couldn't believe one of their chosen elite specters could be guilty of something like that. They needed proof, which meant I needed proof. Fortunately, I wasn't alone in my search. Garrus, another Turian, wanted to help. A top agent for Citadel security. Despite orders from his superiors that he shouldn't get involved, he told me he was suspicious of Saren and he had some useful leads. More importantly, he was willing to share them. That led me to Rex, the biggest, nastiest-looking Krogan bounty hunter I'd ever seen. He turned out to be more than just a brute. It was his intel that led us to a fugitive with incriminating evidence on Saren. The fugitive turned out to be an energetic little quarian named Tally. A tech expert with a knack for hacking, she procured some information on Saren. Evidence that proved Saren was dirty. Tally's evidence proved that Saren was responsible for the massacre on Eden Prime, and that the immense warship we'd spotted was in fact Saren's flagship. But it went much further. Saren was trying to find a way to bring back a race of sentient machines from dark space. Machines allegedly responsible for cleansing the galaxy of all organic life. These Reapers were blamed for wiping out all life 50,000 years ago, including the Protheans, then disappearing back through the mass relays to dark space, leaving no trace that they'd ever been. That explained why Saren was after the beacon, and it made some sense out of my visions, but not much else. 
We couldn't convince the Council that the Reapers were a threat. But they agreed Saren had to be stopped. They stripped him of his Spectre status and gave me the honor of becoming the first human Spectre. My first task? Bring down Saren. Anderson decided to stay behind, giving up his ship, the Normandy. He told me I'd need it more than he would. He also pointed me in a direction. Liara. A Prothean expert, adept in biotics, and maybe most importantly, daughter of Benezia, Saren's top lieutenant. And like most Asari, as beautiful as she is intelligent, and born with a unique ability to meld with other species, Liara was able to help me decipher some of the vision the Beacon had given me. Nothing concrete, but it gave me some clues. And a new appreciation for the Asari. Her technique for accessing my vision was unexpected, but not at all unpleasant. Caden was a little concerned about the connection I shared with Liara. As commander, I knew either relationship had the potential to interfere with the mission. I decided discretion was the better part of valor, and kept my focus on our goal, finding Saren. Thanks to Liara's help, we had our next lead, Benezia. Saren had taken her to Novaria, where he'd enslaved the queen of a dangerous race of insect-like creatures, the Rachni. He ordered Benezia to use the same technique Liara had used on me to extract information from the Rachni queen. Queen's drones were everywhere, and they were not happy. We had to fight through hundreds of them to get to Benezia. By the time we arrived, Saren was gone, with the information. I tried to reason with Benezia, but Saren had indoctrinated her. He had somehow acquired the ability to control people's actions and wills. Benezia wouldn't surrender, and Liara was forced to watch her mother die in her arms. And I was left with an angry, dangerous Rachni Queen to deal with. She claimed her drones would do no harm if I released her. But the Rachni had terrorized the galaxy before. I couldn't take the chance. I had a mission to do. And an army of angry Rachni was one more That's so problem cool. I didn't have time to deal with. With Saren's top lieutenant dead, he was quickly running out of time and places to hide. I tracked him down at his base on Vermeer. But we soon learned it was more than a base of operations. It was a breeding ground. Saren was breeding an army of Krogan. He'd found a cure for the genophage, a disease inflicted on the Krogan to prevent them from breeding and taking over the galaxy. But the Krogan Saren was breeding were slaves, mindless beasts that obeyed Saren's will. I had to destroy the base and all its research. Rex disagreed, violently. Rex wanted the genophage cure for his people. I tried to convince him to help me destroy it, that these Krogan weren't real. But he wouldn't back down. Fortunately, Rex is smarter than he looks. He realized this wasn't the way to help his people, and that Saren was the real threat. When we finally got to the center of the base, I realized just how close Saren was to completing his plan. He was already in communication with the Reapers. Sovereign, Saren's flagship we'd all assumed was just a ship, was a Reaper. It spoke to me, threatened me. I could feel the menace it had for every living thing. It wanted me dead. It wanted us all dead. And I knew it was capable of doing just that. What I couldn't understand was why Saren would help it. But there was no time to think about it. Sovereign knew where we were. We had to destroy the base and get the hell out. I split my team into two squads, sending Ash with one and Caden with the other as a distraction. We had a nuke and we planned to use it. Before we could detonate the bomb, Saren showed up. We fought. I stalled him to make time for my team. And in talking to him, I realized the truth. It wasn't Saren who was indoctrinating everyone. It was Sovereign, the Reaper. And Saren was in deeper than all of them. He tried to convince me he was still in control. Said he'd found a way to reduce the Reaper's influence. But he was kidding himself or believing the lies Sovereign was telling him. Before I could convince him to stop, he ran, leaving me just seconds to extract my squad mates. I tried, but it wasn't fast enough. I could only save one of them. Ash was a good friend and a great soldier, but I had to choose, and I chose Caden. That was the last time Saren would slip away from me. I knew then, the next time we met, one of us would die. 
With my team mostly intact, we chased Saren and his army to Ilos, a long-lost planet that had once belonged to the Protheans. As we prepared for what we knew would be a desperate fight, I spoke to my crew. We were just one ship, against Saren's growing army. I assured them all that despite the odds, we could defeat him. I'd never tell anyone, but I had my doubts. Leaving Ashley behind had hardened my resolve, but revealed a weakness in my defenses. How many more friends and allies would I be willing to sacrifice in order to stop Saren? We arrived on Ilos close behind Saren. Once on the planet, we discovered a Prothean databank that helped me put the final pieces of my vision together. The Reapers had come 50,000 years ago, and every 50,000 years before that, each time purging the galaxy of life. The Protheans had fought and died like every species before them, but a few survived long enough to leave a parting gift. The Protheans had discovered that the Citadel was the key to controlling the mass relays. By sabotaging the Citadel, they found a way to close the relays to dark space, slowing the Reaper's return, giving us the time we needed to find a solution to stop the Reapers once and for all. Saren knew this. He was leading his army to take control of the Citadel and re-establish the relays to dark space, bringing the waiting Reapers here to destroy us all. We followed him to the Citadel. It was intact, but heavily damaged. He had caught the Council fleets by surprise, and they were only now regrouping. And with Sovereign as his flagship, there was little hope that the fleets could counterattack with enough strength to take back the Citadel. But Saren was done running, and I was done chasing him. As the Alliance and Council fleets battled Saren's army outside the Citadel, I cornered the Turian bastard in the Citadel Tower and confronted him. He died believing that the Reapers would save him. As I fought to regain control of the Citadel, the Council's flagship, the Destiny Ascension, fell under attack. Despite Saren's death, Sovereign and Saren's army continued to fight. The Council was aboard the Destiny Ascension, and they were requesting assistance. But I knew in order to help them, I would have to put our Human Alliance fleet in jeopardy. The Council could be replaced. The fleets were needed here and now if we were going to defeat Sovereign. Even with the Citadel back in my control, Saren defeated and the Normandy leading the combined galactic fleet. The battle against Sovereign, a single Reaper, was relentless. It took the combined fleets of humanity and the other races, but in the end, Sovereign fell. But the costs were immense. While humanity's efforts in the war earned us our first seat on the Council, it was a hollow victory. The Reapers were still out there. I knew the fight was far from over, but as the one who'd led the fight against Saren, I was given new responsibilities. The choice of humanity's first counselor was left to me to decide. On the one hand, Udina, the lifetime politician, ruthless and ambitious, he would easily navigate the political landmines that would soon be placed before him. The other choice, Captain Anderson, the career soldier, tough but fair, but a friend and someone I could trust. Both great leaders in their own right. Anderson didn't want the job which was a sure sign he'd be perfect for it. No ambition to get in the way. The war was over. The threat had passed. In time, the Council would rebuild itself. The Citadel could be repaired. Even the pain of lost friends would fade. But none of that mattered if the Reapers were still out there. And if they were all as powerful as Sovereign, we had to find a way to stop them. I had to find a way. I gathered my crew, took my ship, and went in search of answers. Officially, the Council would only say I was assigned cleanup duty, routing out any remnants of Saren's army. Just another routine mission. Wow. That was really cool. I'm glad we watched that. Really, they summed it up really, really well. And there was actually parts of it that I didn't even realize I didn't understand that clarified stuff for me. Commander Shepard has been recovered. The Lazarus Project will proceed as planned. They found my body? And put something in my, implanted something? Oh, this is crazy. Oh, 
Wow! Oh my god, it's me! Wow, they recreated me. So cool. USA! USA! <laughs> Humanity first. That was a really, really cool comic. I enjoyed it. Called everyone on the Destiny Ascension. You're I am ruthless! Yes! Yes, my first playthrough was a ruthless renegade run. <laughs> Glad I stayed true to it. <laughs> true brother. When do you first control or uh, counselor be chosen by I don't know the government of the alliance on Earth or like by a democratic vote? Yeah, it's interesting that they left it up to me, you know. Bro, thank you for the follow. I totally missed that earlier. Thank you so much. Yeah, no mention of Jenkins or the frog. Yep, frog grin. <laughs> Can't kill me. We have the tech. Uh, we can rebuild her science overload. Dang. Accept imported face, default appearance, custom appearance. Okay, so this is where I can change my appearance. Okay, part of me wants to look at all the new options that they have in Mass Effect 2, but part of me also wants to keep my appearance from the first one so that we stay in that same ruthless renegade mindset, you know? I don't know if I change my appearance, I'm gonna be like, oh, who is she? Maybe she's nice, <laughs> you know? But I could I could give myself longer hair though and be like my hair grew in between games, which actually makes sense, right? Uh, Lazarus, yeah, Lazarus project. Frog grin, some things are better left forgotten. <laughs> Me with smoother hair. I love how you were smiling at the comic tree. I really liked it, yeah, I really liked it. Chosen by a democracy of one. <laughs> Three years in the graphics. The graphical improvement is incredible. Change your hair or something? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I feel like I gotta do something about my eyebrows too. What happened there? It's like my eyebrows got singed. Fix mistakes for Mass Effect 1. I think everything looks fine except I like longer hair and better eyebrows. Yeah, just a tip. As far as I remember, if you go with custom appearance, it resets you to default in the creator, so you got Ooh. to remake it all from scratch and then adjust. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I would hope it would leave your face and then you can make edits from there, but I feel like it wouldn't do that, huh? That is true? Okay, maybe we shouldn't mess with it then. Aw, oh, that kind of sucks. Went to Dr. T Dr. Kim, they will understand. A cool feature for this is if you aren't importing a save for Mass Effect 1, you can uh, simulate major decisions during this walkthrough, so it enables you to still somewhat tailor your character with the path. Oh, that is cool, Jawhead. Yeah, I didn't know. They, they said interactive comic, and I didn't interact with it at all. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Think a lot more than your eyebrows got singed in the intro, but yeah, my hair looks fine though. It's just my eyebrows that look kind of whack. <laughs> Mass Effect 3 does let you adjust imported faces. Oh, 2 doesn't. Okay. I guess we'll have to wait till 3 to uh, mess with our appearance. Bowl cut, doing. <laughs> can only make edits in 3. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, we can finally grow our hair in Mass Effect 3. All right. We'll leave the imported face. Yeah, it even shows you that it resets it. Interesting. Okay. We'll leave it. Ah, here we are going to make changes, though. So in Mass Effect 1, I played as a vanguard. In Mass Effect 2, I think I'm gonna switch to Infiltrator. Let's see what it says about Vanguards. Vanguards are outfitted with L5N implants, enabling them to perform a biotic charge that strikes the opponent with incredible force while bringing the Vanguard in close for short range combat. I... Did I just like not figure out how to melee in Mass Effect 1, or was there no meleeing in Mass Effect 1? Because I didn't do any sort of melee. Or not anything I would consider melee. I'm missing half my eyebrows, yeah. Go back and look up the code for the face you settled on. I guess I could do that, yeah. Vanguard's a lot of fun. I did enjoy the Vanguard, but I used the sniper rifle so much that I feel like it wasn't worth it. But, but then again, I... No, you guys said that the they changed like the ammo in Mass Effect 2, so I'm like, maybe I won't stick with the sniper rifle as much. I don't know. It's because it originally was interactable in all the branches and was done in a website. Oh, oh, it served less as a recap and more as a summary in some traces from Mass Effect 1 for people who are not importing a save, gotcha. Don't fool yourself, pick the sniper class. <laughs> kind of played as an infiltrator. I did jawhead. They changed the combat and skills a lot for the second game. I just never meleeed? 
They never taught me how to in the tutorial. They never taught me how to access the wheel of biotics in tech either. <laughs> we had to figure that out in our on our own. Yeah, only shooting and biotics. You tried melee, but you did you did like no damage. Oh. It's very basic in one. It's only really good in three, okay. Still popular option for most that you know. Alright, um Power training biotic charge pull shockwave. We got new new stuff. Weapon training, shotgun, heavy pistol, submachine gun, ammo training, incendiary, and cryo. Feared for their high risk, high reward combat style. Closing quickly on enemies and destroying them at close range with weapons and biotic ability. Yeah, I stayed far range the whole time. Or long range, I guess. Infiltrators are equipped with cloaking systems that allow them to avoid detection for short periods of time, granting a tactical advantage over enemies. Power training, tactical cloak, incinerate AI hacking. Weapon training, sniper rifle, heavy pistol, submachine gun. Okay, so at least we still have other gun options. We're not just like locked to the sniper rifle. Ammo training, cryo disruptor. Infiltrators are tech and combat specialists with the unique ability to cloak themselves from visual and technological detection. Infiltrators are deadly at any range with a wide variety of weapons, equipment, and powers that can take down any enemy. I think the reason that this class kind of like steered me away in Mass Effect 1 is because it sounds more like a stealth class and you all know I am not good at stealthing. I was like, I don't think I would take advantage of that, but it's so different in how it plays out in this versus like a game like Cyberpunk, you know? Maybe it's not and maybe I just couldn't figure it out in Cyberpunk, <laughs> but you know, I, I kind of did some stealthy things, more stealthy things in this than I did in Cyberpunk. Firing at point blank range, okay. With rifles? What is this? The 1700s? <laughs> Infiltrator, yeah. Uh, Vanguard is definitely the best. Shoes? I'm basing this advice on lots of careful thinking by D20. It's not stealth, but more like in, oh crap, let me hide and live. Yeah. It sounds cool, right? The invisibility cloak or whatever the cloaking tactical cloak is. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mass Effect 2 is definitely much less stealth than Cyberpunk. Really isn't any stealth in Mass Effect. There's like hiding behind things, which to me is like stealthy enough. And I get that you could hide behind things in Cyberpunk as well, but I didn't bother doing that. I just like ran in and started shooting everything. Not helpful. Okay, I, I think I'm gonna go Infiltrator. There's no new classes, right? It's all the same ones. So I'm gonna go Infiltrator. Yeah. Choose Shepard. Oh, still a colonist, ruthless, and now an Infiltrator. <laughs> Just changed our class a bit. Keep in mind that Vanguard is the most enjoyable and fun in terms of gameplay. Well, I feel like enjoyable and fun is subjective, right? I enjoyed playing as a Vanguard, but at the same time, I feel like I was playing more in the playstyle of an infiltrator. So I think I think I would enjoy either one. Yeah. Vanguard does have a major change. Infiltrator's so much fun. Can't be said objectively, yeah. What happened? I know! I know for Penguin! I wanted to fix the eyebrows, but we can't. <laughs> Very limited at range in Mass Effect 2. The only stealth in Mass Effect is kill everyone and then they can't alert anyone. Okay, that was like my strat in Cyberpunk though. Kill everyone before <laughs> before they can do anything about it. You prefer Infiltrator to Vanguard? Up to personal taste, exactly. Yeah. Infiltrator? I hardly know her. Chaotic fun in Mass Effect 3. Alright, we're gonna accept this. And my ugly eyebrows. Once you confirm your character is complete, you will be unable to change any settings. All right. Yes, on the monitor. Something's wrong. She's reacting to outside stimuli, showing an awareness of her surroundings. Oh my god, Miranda. I think she's waking up. Damn it, Watson. She's not ready yet. Give her the sedative. Uh oh. Shepard. Don't try to move. Just lie still. Try to stay calm. Heart rate's still climbing. Brain activity is off the charts. Stats pushing into the red zone. It's not working. Another dose. Now. Heart rate dropping. Stats falling back into normal range. <laughs> Too close. We almost lost her. I told you your estimates were off. Run the numbers again. Her eyes are piercing. No, oh, it's me. Wake up, Commander. We got new scars. Get out of that bed now. This facility is under attack. 
Uh, what? Can we get two seconds of peace? Oh, good gracious. Nope. Nope. Grab the pistol! I grabbed it! This pistol doesn't have a thermal clip. It's a med bay. We'll get you a clip from them. Damn it! Those canisters by the door are going to blow. Get behind cover. Keep your head down, Shepard. Shield yourself from the blast. Someone's hacking security trying to kill you. Look for a thermal clip for your pistol. This is a cool tutorial. Reload. Looks like oh, they set Lord. up a barricade to try holding the mechs off. Forward and eight of vo we're vaulting. Oh, <laughs> picked up ammo I think oh I must be full so if I walk over it and it doesn't pick up I guess it means I'm full that's a cool tutorial uh oh have a bird pack for us <laughs> how was your stream what were you up to today were you playing more ff16 or were you doing something else i know good to see you i knew you were a loose cannon <laughs> heat sinks yeah the ammo but not ammo oh interesting interesting okay where's a frogger <laughs> redeems a growl shift bird pack welcome in raiders welcome in growl how are you doing i hope you're having a great weekend friend we just beat mass effect one and we are now starting mass effect two uh we're in the tutorial mm -hmm. so you got here right on time welcome in guys welcome in yes the bird pack. oh you're playing bloodborne how fun what were you doing in bloodborne um take your time take your time growl and please take care of yourself if you need to i know streaming is exhausting so please make sure you take care of yourself first so I can make a new game later and choose your eyebrows and hair and send me both safe out. <laughs> I can tell you where they're stored and I can edit the main say, oh, do that. That's so nice of you to offer. Thank you. Top five favorite games of all time. Hi, Shockwave. Welcome in. I'm really, really enjoying uh, the Mass Effect series. We just finished Mass Effect 1 and uh, I'm, I am nervous about Mass Effect 2 already, but it looks really cool. Um, the movement feels a lot better already than Mass Effect 1. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Very excited. You're on Bloodstar Beast? Oh, you're getting through it. Learning to counterattack. Nice, Growl. I believe in you. I believe in you. Bloodstar Beast is a tough one. Very, very tough uh, early game boss. So you will get it. I believe in you. You know how to counterattack. Just learning to do it on this boss. Gotcha, gotcha. It's a tough one. It's a tough one for sure. Okay, I'm getting shot at. Actually, I found some people and they were fighting some big monster, so... You can do it, Growl, exactly. Yeah, I had a I had a tough time there my first playthrough too. I think I had to let chat backseat me because I was like, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> uh, Bloodborne definitely has a, a steep learning curve for sure. So took you forever to beat. It's a tough one. I see so many people get stuck on Bloodstar B. So you got this though, Growl, I believe in you. Definitely the boss that made you wake up to the challenge you'd have in Bloodborne, which is your first souls like, yeah. I think that is definitely one that stumps people a lot, uh, cause 
there, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it for sure. Even even as someone who's played through Bloodborne and done like a BL4, like just thinking about Bloodstar Beast gives me anxiety because uh, it's it's just a tough boss to face early game. Okay. Uh oh. Oh man, dead. Oh. Grenade launcher. You, here come the mechs. Use a grenade launcher to take them out. Oh, this one. This this one. Oh, jeez. All right. Today's bird fact: the strongest food grinder. Since birds don't have teeth, they can't chew food before they swallow it. Instead, they have a sort of pre-stomach called a gizzard, which grinds their food into smaller particles. The strongest gizzard on record belongs to the wild turkey. It can crush whole acorns still in the shell in fewer than four hours. I love it. That's so cool. Oh, what? <laughs> I love it. All right. We just got a grenade launcher. Now we have a heavy pistol and a grenade launcher. And I gotta equip this. Um, spotted. Uh oh. Take the elevator down one floor. That wasn't the mechs though. Where's the mechs at? Oh oh oh! This is the elevator. Oh dang. Hurry! Get to the door! Run! Yeah, I'm running! Oh, it's a quick switch. Oh, shoot. Do we want the grenade launcher? I don't know. I only have one left. Cerberus laptop. But subject shows signs of recovery. Major organs are again functional and there are signs of rudimentary neurological activity. In an effort to accelerate the process, we've moved from simple organic reconstruction of the subject to biosynthetic fusion. Initial results show promise. Biosynthetic fusion? I don't even know what that is. A safe. Oh, I got some credits. Nice. Log update. The cost of this project is astronomical. Over four billion credits so far. But nobody seems to care that we've gone over budget. I don't know where the boss gets all his money. Maybe it's better not to know. I just wish he'd kick a little more in my direction once in a while. Okay. Interesting. You can crush whole acorns in your mouth in like two minutes. Tar one bird syrup. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no! Oh no! Coming. doing here i thought you were still a work in progress who are you you tell me i need answers look pal i don't know where i am or how i got here plus my head feels like an overripe melon ready to split open <laughs> how about you fill me in a little damn yeah i forgot this is all new to you. <laughs> sorry about that he's like I'm you Jacob woke up Tim. on the wrong side of the bed stationed here for hostiles detected uh oh damn it nice jacob Things must be worse than I thought if Miranda's got you running around. I'll fill you in, but we better get you to the shuttle first. Lead the way. Just a few questions. Why are they attacking? I'm tired of taking orders. Uh-oh. Oh, man, it's already tough. He's so nice to us. <laughs> you gotta be mean to him. Hacking is back. Cyborg hacker woman. Hi, Harmless. How are you doing? What are the bosses that made you realize how oh, so many allies is not uh, at all helpful sometimes huh? <laughs> then you feel special most people go their entire lives without ever knowing how much others value them you also ran out of blood vials so i'm getting into phase three of uh bsb with just counter attacks and try very hard to avoid getting hit oh no yeah i forgot the whole having to farm blood vials is pretty tedious uh, especially if you're like stuck on a boss but you got this girl oh no he's hot <laughs> The name starts with a J. F. Incoming. Oh, this is Jenkins. Oh no, Jenkins part two. Kind of like I said, dramatic. He's working on a highly skilled experimental cutting edge biomedic operation for a secret organization. Probably getting paid millions. <laughs> Renegade beginnings. It's gotta happen, right? Roof detected. <laughs> Time to be mean. 
Ever since I woke up, someone's been telling me where to go and what to do. I need answers. It was a tutorial. Fair enough. I'll give you the quick version. You and your ship were attacked and destroyed. You were killed. Dead as dead can be when they brought you here. Our scientists spent the last two years putting you back together. You've been comatose, or worse, that whole time. Welcome back to your life. Dang. Two years? Where is here? This doesn't look like an Alliance facility. It isn't. I can't say much more than that for now. The Alliance officially declared you killed in action. The whole galaxy thinks you're oh, dead. Oh, dang. If we don't get to those shuttles, they'll be right. What about my crew? Let's get out of here. Were there any other survivors from the Normandy? I'll tell you what. You help me finish off these mechs, <laughs> and I'll play 20 questions with you all day. I need to know. Alone thermal clips, but I'm a biotic. Just give the order when you want me to hit him with the good stuff. Oh, dang. The good stuff. What? Oh, I'm not doing so well. What what am I doing? Am I supposed to hit him with the grenade launcher? Oh, am I running? Bestie! You didn't tell me we were running! Am I shooting the wall? Oh, I'm shooting the wall. Gosh darn it! I'm almost out of ammo. This is not good, is it? Do they want me to use this? I will use it. <laughs> oh, it's right. Classic choose left, right mix up. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Classic choose left right mix up. No one told me. <laughs> I was like, I'm pressing right bumper. I was pressing left bumper. I'm pressing right bumper. What do you want me to do? <laughs> All right, let's see. Select pull. Pull. Oh, these have like mapped to other buttons. No Medi gel, great. Rips through shields and shreds synthetic targets. The cloak. All right, I'm using pull. Oh, nice, nice, Jacob. Okay. I <laughs> promise I'd answer your questions. What do you want to know? Uh, Shepard's injuries attack on the station. Normandy crew. Jacob Miranda, I was about to be there forever. I used all my ammo, I'm so upset. I read the text, I got the left and right mixed up and then I was like, nothing's working right now. <laughs> Never eat slimy words. I'm really bad with my directions, okay? This can't be new for anyone to hear. Remember holding it next to me? I, when I'm panicking, I can't figure it out, okay? When I'm panicking, it's a whole heck of mess. You said they spent two years rebuilding me. How bad were my He injuries? said we were dead. I'm no doctor, but it was bad. When I first saw you, you were nothing but meat and tubes. Anywhere else, they'd have put you in a coffin. But Project Lazarus was different. Cutting edge technology. Cutting edge technology? Project Lazarus? Can you tell me about the project? Were there other test subjects? Project Lazarus only had one subject. The whole point was to bring you back. Just you. Even that was a Dang. challenge. Dang. Two years. All the top scientists. The best technology money could buy. Do you know anything about this attack? Who's behind it? What they're after? Dan Fino. 
I was getting ready for some shut eye, then bam, bam. Bunch of explosions. Next thing I know, every damn mech in the place starts shooting at us. I'm guessing it had to be an inside job. You'd need top security access to hack all the mechs. Hmm. The last thing I remember is the Normandy blowing up. Did anyone else make it? Just about everybody survived. A few servicemen from the lower decks didn't get out. Navigator Presley was killed by Presley an Presley was killed! Everyone else, including the non-alliance crew, the Asari, Liara, and the Quarian, they all made it out alive. Okay. Does that mean Joker made it? Do you know what any of them are doing now? I don't know, Commander. It's been two years. They've moved on. Left the Alliance. Could be anywhere. I want to find them. They were my team. If they knew I was alive, they'd come back. Maybe you can track them down after we get off the station. If we get off the station. What's your job here? Depends on who you ask. Technically, I'm Miranda's top lieutenant. But I'm just a soldier. I served five years in the Alliance before this. Now I'm in charge of the station's security. Usually a lot more dull than this. Normally I don't fire my gun unless it's target practice. Okay. When I first woke up, someone named Miranda was talking to me over the radio. We lost contact just before I ran into you. Miranda Lawson is the station's ranking officer. She led the Lazarus team. It was her job to bring you back to life, no matter what. Should have guessed she'd try to save you. She's not about to give up on you now. You said you lost contact. Could you tell what was happening? It didn't sound good. Some gunfire and an explosion right before I lost her. She knows how to take care of herself. But I hope she's okay. Dang! <clears throat> Built different. Uh, they somehow preserved her mind. That's the most impressive part. Yeah, we were under for like two years. And somehow we woke up and like remembered almost everything except for the last part where the ship exploded. Learn, learn, learn one of the most fundamental concepts to existence. Oh, thank you, Tar. Mm hmm. You sure cut off a lot of my edges. Seeing your reaction so far, I'm already quite confident you'll enjoy this game more than I did, which is great. What's the okay, quickest way to that's those good. <laughs> Depends where the mechs are thickest. It's probably best if we check. Check. Anyone on this frequency? Anybody still alive out there? Hello. Hello. Wilson, this is Jacob. I'm here with Commander Shepard. Just took out a wave of mechs over in D Wing. Shepard's alive. How the hell? Never mind. You need to get her out of there. Get to the service tunnels and head for the network control room. Roger that, Wilson. Stay on this frequency. Who's that? I think I remember a Wilson checking on me one time when I woke up. That's him. He's the chief medical tech. Answers directly to Miranda. Come on. The service tunnels are this way. Okay. I guess I'm leading. Uh-oh. Oh, well, spooky. Oh man. Okay, I. Eyes ahead. Tag. Uh oh. I've got him. Nice, nice, Jacob. <laughs> Wilson, find us another route. Damn it, Wilson. This room is crawling with mechs. The whole station is crawling with mechs. I'm doing the best I can. I wish I had my little radar. I could see where the baddies are. Wilson! Wilson! Hang on! Where are you? Server room B! Hurry! They're out of control! Up those stairs, Shepard! Oh, God! I'm in! Oh, no! I think they got him. I think they got him. Uh-oh. Down here! Bastards got me in a leg! Those B-words! I remember you, Wilson. Let's get you out of here. Remembering to be angry, at least. <laughs> Uh, let's get you we out of here. We need to get off this station. I'm not going anywhere till someone fixes my leg. What? Should be some Medigel in the first aid station on the wall. Oh Hopefully yes, the Medigel. Moving again. Grab the Medigel from the first aid station on the wall. I got, I, I got it. Oh man, Medigel's in here too. Oh wait. Oh Unity. I mean, I guess he's needs. I guess he's fallen <laughs> in the sense that he can't get up. Okay. 
Thanks, Shepard. <clears throat> Never thought you'd save my life. Guess that makes us even now, huh? We have thought unity off the bat. down the security mechs. But whoever did this fried the whole system. Completely irreversible. We didn't ask what you were doing. Why do you even have security mech clearance? You were in the bio wing. Uh-oh. Are you listening? I came here to try and fix this. Besides, I was shot. How do you explain that? Is he sussy? I don't trust any of you yet. It doesn't matter. Is he a little saucy? <laughs> I think he is. <laughs> Maybe they implanted fake memories, which is why the comic said you admired Liara, right? Yeah, that part was kind of off. Wilson! Best way to get experience with no experience. We didn't ask. <laughs> Sus! Sus on! Sushi? Emergency meeting, yes. All right, it doesn't matter. I don't care who set up who. Those mechs are shooting at all of us. We'll sort it out later. Sort it out later. We need to find Miranda first. We can't just leave her behind. Forget about Miranda. She was over in D-Wing. The mechs were all over that. He's center. just gonna leave her? There's no way she's Super survived. sus. A bunch of mechs won't drop Miranda. She's alive. Then where is she? Why haven't we heard from her? There are only two possible explanations. She's either dead or she's a wow, traitor. Wow, he is making a lot of accusations. But she tried to help me. Either way, we can't help her. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Way says, right? Monster. How do I explain that? Well, you press the trigger on a gun that makes it go choo choo and it shoots bullets. <laughs> if you're standing in the way, you get shot. Uh, I mean, this is this is true, though. We don't know who we can or can't trust, right? I feel like I trust Jacob. I don't trust Wilson, though. Wilson's very sus. He's acting super sus. Hi, Classy. How are you doing? <gasps> Where's Jenkins? <laughs> Jenkins is long gone, sadly. But now we have Jacob. He's like Jenkins 2.0. Kaylin Wilson's indoctrinated? There's something off about Wilson, for sure. All about cut and run. Giving up on Miranda, kill him now! <laughs> Can't trust this guy, look at Haven't him. I have known her long enough to trust her. This project was Miranda's baby. She'd never sabotage. Not intentionally. Okay, maybe she's not a traitor. But that doesn't change the facts. We're here, she's not. We need to save ourselves. Wow. The shuttle bay is only a few. Oh. We can overload the canisters to clear a path to the shuttles. These mechs don't know when to quit. Overload. Oh, overload's so cool. Let's get out of here. Okay, we took him down, but this is getting tense. Shepard, if I tell you who we work for, will you trust me? This really isn't the time, Jacob. We won't make it if she's expecting a shot in the back. If you want to piss off the boss, it's your ass, Jacob. The Lazarus Project, the program that rebuilt you. It's funded and controlled by Cerberus. They mentioned Cerberus in Mass Effect 1 a few times, right? On a few of like the side missions, I think. Uh, Pedro, thank you so much for the follow. I really appreciate it. I don't think they talked in detail about Cerberus, but they mentioned it and mentioned that there was like, the way they described it made it seem like it was s sort of like covert and also nefarious maybe. Poor Jenkins, if only he had better leadership. Oh no. So Wilson is not a volleyball, so he's not trustworthy. I love it. Traitor, I barely know her. Isn't Cerberus like the bad people? I think so. I think so. I killed a few of them. Oh, I don't remember killing them, but I remember I remember the name Cerberus popping up in Mass Effect 1. Uh, never heard of them. That sounds familiar. Why would Cerberus save me? You lied to me. You told me you were with the Alliance. I don't like being played for a sucker. I didn't lie to you, Commander. I was with the Alliance okay. before I joined Cerberus. The Alliance declared you dead. They gave up. Cerberus spent a fortune to bring you back. Look, I'd be suspicious too, but right now we have to work together. I thought you deserved to know what's what. That's Once nice. we're off the station, I'll take you to the elusive man. He'll explain everything. The guy with the blue the eyes. I'll never work for Cerberus. Fine, let's go. What are you after? Elusive man. Is he in charge of all this? Yeah, that's not his real name, of course. Nobody knows who he really is. It was a code name the Alliance used for him. Kind of stuck. He'd better have answers. I don't care what his name is. He just needs to answer my questions. All of them. He spent a lot of money and time bringing you back. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to tell you whatever you want to know. 
It's not much farther to the shuttle bay. It's okay. <laughs> I think it's cute that they put the besties like portraits at the bottom, but it looks like they're on my butt. <laughs> Just, I don't know. That's all I can see now. Like I have tattoos of their faces on my butt, you know? I don't know. That's all I can see now though. <laughs> Understandable, it's hard to keep track of everyone you- You have everyone you murdered! Wow. Oh, it looks just the same. Gain conscience in some kind of medical facility, you must find your way to safety. The shuttle's really hope of getting off the station alive. One for each cheek, exactly. Exactly, that's all I can see. They're a nefarious organization with lots of organized illegal activities and radical philosophies. Okay, okay. And I think that's all we're supposed to know right now. Got some credits, nice. Oh, I don't have access to the map. Looks like this is the only way forward though. Besties, are you coming? Wilson, I don't know. I don't, look, look at him. He just look all sussy. What do I have? Disruptor ammo? System not designed to specialize in the Besties, you didn't help at all! very generous with the ammo so it should be fine uh hello uh-oh uh-oh that Ashley would like? She wouldn't though. Do headshots do extra damage here? They did in Mass Effect 1, so I would assume they do the same in this one. Uh, allegedly with Mass Effect 2 enemies are pretty spongy. Oh, are they really? So far I feel like it's been okay. But I get that we're at the very beginning. <laughs> Come on, through here. We're almost at the... Miranda, but you are... Uh oh. Dead. What the hell are you doing? My job. Wilson betrayed us all. You can't trust anybody! <laughs> can't trust anybody! We know. I, I trust Jacob. I don't trust Miranda or Wilson. They both look real sussy right now. <laughs> We're playing Infiltrator Classy. Yeah, we switched to Infiltrator. Uh. <laughs> Did you want me to stay Vanguard, Harmless? You don't think they're my besties? I trust Jacob. I trust him. Are you seen with that? She like shot him in the neck. Ooh. Who am I to judge? Okay, good question. Good, good point. <laughs> good point. All right. She's saying Wilson betrayed us. That your idea of due process? Now you can't question him. That's a good point. Okay, what happens now? I knew he was lying. I did know he was lying, though. 
Hmm. But now we can't question him. You should have taken him alive. See what he knew. I too call risky. the shots. I've put too much time and effort bringing you back to life to let you get killed now. You really think Wilson's capable of that? Not anymore. Uh. Well, we can pick more options. Okay, what happens now? So, what's our next step? We get on the shuttle and go. My boss wants to speak to you. You mean the elusive man? I know you work for Cerberus. Ah, Jacob. I should have known your conscience would get the better of you. Lying to the commander isn't the way to get her to join our cause. Well, since we're getting everything out in the open, is there anything else you want to ask before we go, Commander? Yes. Location during- yeah, where was she during the attack? Convenient that you show up as we're leaving. Where were you during the attack? Besides trying to save your life? Wilson figured out I was helping you when he sent an army of mechs to take me out. I got here as soon as I could. Probably a little too soon if you ask Wilson. How does she know that he did that though? She's super sus. I definitely don't trust her yet. <clears throat> Miranda carries out sentence immediately. Yep. <laughs> Miranda is ruthless, huh? She does seem a bit ruthless and Jacob does seem a bit on the Paragon, like good morality side. What about the rest of the people on the station? This is the evac area. If they're not here now, they're not coming. So I might have survived. Can't leave without knowing for sure. We need to go back and look. Don't you get it? The only one worth saving is you. Everyone else is expendable. Dang. She's right. We all knew the risks when we signed up. Without you, there's no point to any of this. Where are we going? Another Cerberus facility. The elusive man is waiting for you there. And if I don't come along? You're the Lazarus Project's director, aren't you? That's right. I put two years of my life into this project. Into you. Why? What does Cerberus want from me? Maybe you should ask the elusive Ugh. man when you meet him. Useless. He pours virtually unlimited resources into Lazarus. Obviously, he has some kind of plan for you. I guess we gotta talk to the elusive man. Series really was so ahead of its time. A uh, Spectre infiltrator since 2010. Good luck. She's really pretty though, so you trust her? This is also how you work IRL. <laughs> Right, the accent is all over the place sometimes. Okay, when she first started talking, she I got a uh, Aussie accent from her. Now I don't know. Uh, sometimes a bit British and sometimes more American. You already hate her and want her dead. Oh no. I have a feeling she's not going to make it very far in the game. Judge Miranda, she's pragmatic. All right, let's go. Not enough of this station to last a lifetime. Or two, in your case. Come on. Oh boy. There we go. Before you meet with the elusive man, we need to ask a few questions to evaluate your condition. Come on, Miranda, more tests? Shepard took down those mechs without any trouble. That has to be good enough. It's been two years since the attack. The elusive man needs to know that Shepard's personality and memories are intact. Oh god, they're quizzing me! Questions. Two years? I feel fine. Did you say two years? I've been gone that long? Two years and twelve days. And you were on an operating table for most of it. The sooner we start, the sooner we can be done. Start she is Aussie. History. Okay. Records show you were a colony kid. Lost your parents when slavers hit Mindwar. You enlisted and led troops during some heavy fighting, most notably on Torfin. Do you remember taking on some Batarian slavers? I lost a lot of people. We're done here. I did what was necessary. <laughs> More Aussie than anything you feel? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Mass Effect fans in chat. Favorite classes go? I played Vanguard in my uh, playthrough of Mass Effect 1, but we switched to Infiltrator for, for this run because I stuck with the sniper rifle pretty much the entire run. Yeah. Okay, her VA is Australian. Interesting. All right, I did what was necessary. Those bastards were dug in deep in a fortified bunker. I sent a lot of good soldiers to their deaths. That's how it had to be. You got the job done. That's all that matters. Satisfied, Miranda? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Let's try something more recent. Vermeer, where you destroyed Saren's cloning facility, you had to leave one of your squad behind to die in the blast. She's reminding Chief us. Ashley Williams was killed in action. It was your call. Why did you leave her behind? 
It was a hard choice. We're done here. It was that or die. Well, it was it was pick either Ashley or Kaiden. Being in command means that sometimes you give orders knowing that your people are going to die. That can't affect your decisions. Ash gave her life for the rest of the team. Without her, I couldn't have stopped Saren. She died a hero. I understand, Commander. And I wasn't judging your decision. Everybody at Cerberus knows that cloning facility had to be destroyed. There are other tests we really should run. Come on, Miranda. Enough with the quizzes. The memories are there, and I can vouch for Shepard's combat skills personally. I suppose you're right. We'll have to hope the elusive man accepts our little field test as evidence enough. Okay, do you see how, like, everyone thinks we're dead? And everyone thinks Ashley's dead? But we're alive. So Ashley could very well be alive, Maybe too. We don't know. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Add up, because Jedi Cowboys, voice actor was in Handmaid's Tale. Oh, really? Wait, do we know which character um, she played in Handmaid's Tale? I watched a few seasons of that. She was racist. Uh, Vanguard's fun in uh, Mass Effect 2. Yeah, we picked Kaiden. The elusive man is waiting for you in the other room. Armor locker, customized gear. Oh. I don't think there's much I can do right now. Wait. You can change. Oh. Oh, this is cool. Oh no, how long are we gonna be here for? <laughs> I apologize in advance. Ooh, ooh. That is very pink. <gasps> That's a cool color. Oh, should we be red? I feel like we should wear red. Oh, the dark red looks really nice. Oh no. <laughs> Just the episode of a nuclear detonation? Yeah, but like, so are we, pretty much. I don't think a secret government organization is spending uh, billions of dollars to resurrect Ashley, but maybe. I Okay, I'm not saying that I think she was, you know, caught out in the open in the blast. I think she maybe tried to find cover, and maybe she survived the blast. Mm-hmm. No oh, put on American accent, so maybe she has a hard time saying Aussie while acting? Yeah, I think voice actors are probably... Um, they probably do different accents pretty often, so it probably changes as they're talking. So it's probably somewhere in the galaxy interested in spending two years of their time and <laughs> streaming on Ashley. You guys are missing what I'm saying. Inventory system is gone. You had a huge crush on Yvonne when you saw the show, Chuck. You want yellow? Oh my god, this one! Oh, the shiny metallic red, yes. Okay, this one's winning so far. Shiny metallic red. Red's always a good choice. Ashley's still on Vermeer, waiting for a rescue team to arrive. <laughs> she could be. Start her own civilization. We never know. <laughs> Give me the contact of your copium dealer. Ooh, this one's pretty nice. This gold-looking one. There's the yellow heart rod. Ooh, this one, too. This one's really nice. I like the shiny ones. Oh, the green looks nice too, actually. I can't tell what color, is this blue or purple or gray? I can't tell. It has too bright blue. Okay, I think I wanna go with the metallic red. This one? I think I wanna go with this one. Yellow is sick. Ashley Jenkins and Nihilus playing poker together. <laughs> People obsessing over accents like they aren't fluid, things that change. What if Ashley started her life on Australia planet, but then moved to USA planet when she was in her late teens? Shiny metallic red looks super awesome. Yes, I like this one a lot. 
Everyone rags on Ashley, then everyone <laughs> rags on Juice for killing Ashley, pretty much. You spent like 20 minutes on this screen? There, I didn't know there was going to be so many options. Kind of an oil slick black. Yes, that's a good way to describe that one. Oil slick black. This one, it does look like oil. It does. All right, we're going to go with the shiny red. Tint two. Oh my god, there's more. Red on red. Ooh, this one. This one looks nice. It's gotta be ultra red, okay? Because we're ruthless. I feel like that's too bright. This one's dark. I like the darker. There's patterns! Oh, there's only a couple patterns. I'm gonna stay with the no pattern, I guess. Pattern color? Oh, if we pick a pattern, we can pick a color. They don't think I like it. It's very, it's giving Christmas. Okay, no pattern, no pattern. Oh, that's it. Apply. Nice! Wait, can I change my casual outfit too? Oh my god. Why do we look so, fa <laughs> so fancy? <laughs> like a futuristic chef or something. You chose a different color armor every playthrough. Nice. Yeah, the metallic red looks really nice. And there's more. <laughs> You always wait 5 to 60 minutes on these screens? Okay, okay, good. <laughs> Deep blood color to match our behavior patterns. Exactly. Wow, what is this outfit? Looks like a potato sack. Oh, this one's nice. I like this one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one's cool. It's very relaxed. Looks like we're going for a workout. Oh my god. <laughs> Casual outfit. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow. Mm hmm. I think I want to go with this one, though. Yeah, I think I want to go with this one. <laughs> red on red on red. <laughs> it's definitely where we'll end the stream today, chat. May Christmas last all year. You love the hoodie one? This one? <laughs> It's like streetwear, which I guess is casual, right? This one doesn't really read as casual either, but I just like the way this looks out of all of them the most. You like the brown? <laughs> I don't know why this gives me like uh, Star Wars vibes. Can choose in heels with this dress. <laughs> it's our nightclub attire because we are so good at dancing, right? This suit doesn't look very casual. Neither does the sexy dress, no. This one looks casual. This one looks casual. I guess this one too. That's about it. I'm gonna go with this one though. <laughs> Turn her sideways, then cycle through the outfits. This this is giving me chef. The dress. <laughs> I'm going with this one. Wow, Ravon, the only winner of the heist. I didn't even know there was a heist going on. You're gonna say Star Wars vibes too. Make it red? I don't think I can. I don't think I can change the color. The only option is pick the outfit. Like, armor had all these options, but um, the casual only has the one option. So I don't think I can change the color of it. You can't? Okay. Okay, we'll leave it like that then. I forgot what I was doing here. Oh my god. Oh, talk to the guy, right? <laughs> I guess he's down here. Wow. Commander Shepard. Elusive man. I thought we'd be meeting face to face. 
A necessary precaution. Not unusual for people who know what you and I know. You don't know me. What do we know? I need some answers. <clears throat> Can't customize the casual ones. Aw, that's sad. Casual has no customization. Her butt changes size in the dress. Well, different outfits will accentuate different parts of your body. That dress is definitely very form-fitting, though. Always to talk. Always talk to someone when in doubt. Papa Sheen. I like how we address him as the elusive man. Wait, is this is this Charlie Sheen voice actor? Martin Sheen? Huh? Cheeked up on a Sunday? I need some answers. From what I hear, I cost you a fortune. Why'd you do it? For the defense and preservation of humanity. I didn't spend two years and billions of credits billions. bringing you back to serve as a common soldier. But humanity is up against the greatest threat of our brief existence. The Reapers. Good to see your memory still intact. How are you feeling? You're not my friend. Skip the pleasantries. Not bad. <laughs> Cut to the chase. What are the Reapers doing that made you decide to bring me back? We're at war. No one wants to admit it, but humanity is under attack. While you've been sleeping, entire colonies have been disappearing. I was Human in a coma. Colonies. We believe it's someone working for the Reapers. Just as Saren and Ageth aided Sovereign, you've seen it yourself. You bested all of them. That's just one reason we chose you. I'll need a lot of convincing. Maybe I believe you. Where do we start? Sovereign Oops. was trying to harvest all life in the galaxy. Why would the Reapers target a few human colonies? Hundreds of thousands of colonists have vanished. I'd say that fits the definition of harvesting. Nobody's paying attention because it's random, and the attacks occur in remote locations. I don't know why they've suddenly targeted humanity. Maybe you got their attention when you killed one of them. Maybe I believe you? Where do we start? Sovereign was trying to harvest all life in the galaxy. Oh, why would the we just got this one. A few human colonies? Hundreds of thousands of colonists have vanished. I'd say that fits the definition of harvesting. Nobody's paying attention because it's random and the attacks occur in Oh, his father. Locations. I don't know why they not coma. Yeah, actually, we were dead. <laughs> Maybe you got their attention when you killed one of them. Fighting a war doesn't seem like Cerberus. Why are you involved? We're committed to the advancement and preservation of humanity. If the Reapers are targeting us, trying to wipe us out, Cerberus will stop them. If we wait for politicians or the Alliance to act, no more human colonies will be left. You could have trained an entire army for what you spent to bring me back. You're unique. Not just in ability or what you've experienced, but in what you represent. You stood for humanity at a key moment. You're more than a soldier. You're a symbol. And I don't know if the Reapers understand fear, but you killed one. They have to respect that. Okay, where do we start? If you're after the Reapers, just point me in the right direction. Miranda was worried you'd be resistant. She's not usually wrong. I have a shuttle ready to take you to Freedom's Progress, the latest colony to be abducted. Miranda and Jacob will brief you. I'm supposed to trust them? Do I have a choice? What are you expecting? I'll find the evidence. <clears throat> so millions on amassing an armada. No, revive one single foot soldier, right? <laughs> it's foolproof. Foot soldier who doesn't even listen to you. Yeah, no one's getting some screen lag here and there. Are you? I haven't noticed it on my end, but I told you I'm not really good at seeing it. Space human trafficking must be stopped. Help us choose. <laughs> While my camera stays good. Yeah, if you guys are noticing it, let me know and I can adjust things. Songs giving you interstellar vibes. We're special. You want a space cigarette? No. <laughs> you always love these interactions, especially the music. He inspired a bit by the smoking man from the X-Files. I haven't seen the X-Files. Interesting. Um, I'm supposed to trust them? Miranda killed Wilson in cold blood. Jacob's just a gun for hire. You expect me to trust them? Wilson was one of my best agents, but he was a traitor. Traitor! Miranda did exactly what I expected of her, and she saved your life in more ways than one. Jacob's a soldier, one of the best. He's never fully trusted me, but he's always been honest about it. 
You'll be just fine with them. I hope Jacob joins our party. He can take Ashley's place. Um, I'll find the evidence. I'll get what you're looking for and be back before you know it. Good to hear it. Find any clues you can. Who's abducting the colonies? Do they have any connection to the Reapers? I brought you back. It's up to you to do the You best. didn't do anything. You just paid a lot of money. Oh, I forgot I can level up. Um, select squad to spend squad point. Okay, it's the same thing. Will your portrait summary a paragon and renegade points? With more points, you can unlock new conversation options. Already building up that renegade bar. Eight points. Um, so disruptor ammo rips through shields and shreds synthetic targets. Hmm. Cryo ammo. Uh, freezes enemies, allowing you to shatter. Ooh, cryo ammo would be nice. Need rank two disruptor ammo. Tactical cloak to, uh, to your enemies, you're invisible. Exploding flame damages the health and armor of anyone nearby. I love AI hacking. Turn synthetic enemies against their own allies. Operative, your weapon damage is more punishing and frequent, and targeting enemies is easier. That sounds really helpful, actually. I don't know how much of an impact that will have, but it sounds really helpful. You love the elusive man character, one of your favorite parts of the series? You, I haven't seen the X-Files, I know. <laughs> I know. More like Kaiden in ability and temperament. Yeah, he seems like it. Uh, but he seems maybe a bit a bit better than Kaiden. He'll be our new races. No! The people with the money make a, a lot of the big decisions too, whether they get their hands dirty in the process or not. <laughs> All right, this is gonna be tough. Everything sounds really good. I'm gonna put one in operative for now. Um, let's put one in cryo. Okay, activates a cloaking field that prevents most enemies from perceiving you for a short time. Performing any offensive action breaks the cloak. Oh. So this is really just about sneaking. Your attacks from a cloak position are significantly more deadly, and if you do not attack, your cloak lasts less significant, lasts slightly longer. I cannot read anymore. Evolves tackling one of the fly options assassination that reduces your damage bonus while cloaked. Increases your damage bonus. Increases the duration of your cloak so you can stay hidden longer. This doesn't make sense though. It says it increases your damage bonus while you're cloaked. But the cloak goes away as as soon as you attack. So how does that make sense? I feel like you can't be cloaked and doing damage at the same time. I don't know. Tactical cloak, like reading the descriptions, doesn't sound as good as I thought it would be. I'm not sure it's going to be that useful. Um, has a stronger disruption capacity, tearing through shields and incapacitating synthetic enemies for a short time after direct hits. While overheating a target's weapons. Um, cause synthetics to critically overload and explode. Each member of your squad gains... The disruptor ammo's effects are going to catch synthetics in deadly crossfire. Hmm. Improved cryo ammo, the apex of cryogenic realms. This ammunition freezes the targets more frequently for a longer duration. Your entire squad gains cryo. Oh, okay. It looks like for a lot of these, you can like have your entire squad have the powers. Um, I want incinerate though, so I have to do that. Explosive plasma blast inflicts damage over time to all nearby enemies and permanently stops their health regeneration. Very effective against armor. Incinerate sounds good. Advanced Plasma Blast burns through nearly anything it hits. Splash Zone on the Plasma Blast is increased, learning to scorch multiple targets. 
feel like I'm gonna like incinerate. Um, okay, I don't, maybe I didn't understand how AI hacking worked in Mass Effect 1, but in 2 it sounds a bit different, the way it works. Oh, okay, every time you go up you need that number of points, like to get to level 2 you need 2 points, to get to level 3 you need 3 points, so like 1, and then 3, and then six. I explained that terribly, but you know, it's not just one point for each level, which makes sense because they kind of like spelled it out with a UI, but I don't know why I thought it was. Oh, sneak attack. I guess so, but like as soon as you start attacking, the cloak goes away, supposedly, right? A single sniper shot with a boost. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. The only thing I can invest in now is the AI hacking, or I can save. I can save my last point. So you get bonus damage on the first attack normally, how that works. Okay. I, I wasn't sure, yeah. Have a good one, Dark Knight. Get lots of good sleeps. They reworked a lot of abilities. I feel like there wasn't a power that, like, turned enemies into, like, friendly non-hostiles. Uh, but I think that that's what this is doing now. Lots of abilities are different. A lot of the combat is different as well. I don't remember how it is in 2 specifically, but they changed lots of the combat mechanics in general, including the abilities. Okay. I'm going to save my last point. Uh. Oh, I got a lot of journal updates. The ship is waiting for you in the hangar bay to take you to Freedom's Progress. All the... Oops. All the colonists of Freedom's Progress have mysteriously vanished. The elusive man would like a team to investigate the disappearances. Look for clues that might explain what happened to the missing colonists. Oh boy. I still don't have a map. The elusive man is very impressed with you. I'm eager to see if you can live up to his expectations on this mission. Just remember who's in charge. Thanks for resurrecting me. I'll do my best. You sound jealous! Oh god, here we go. <laughs> oh jeez. AI hacking is new. Hi Project, welcome back! No, no worries Project. We wrapped up Mass Effect 1 as you can see. I'm really enjoying 2 so far. Yeah. It, uh, it seems really, really interesting, but it seems like an improved version of Mass Effect 1, so I'm excited. You sound jealous, ruthless! What's the matter, Lawson? Worried you're not his favorite anymore? I've proven my value to the elusive man. Let's hope you're able to do the same. We don't have to be enemies. Is there a problem here? What's your problem? <laughs> God. Are you naturally this bitchy or is it just me? I have the utmost respect for your abilities, Shepard. It's your motivations that concern me. I believe in what Cerberus stands for. Only time will tell if you prove to be an asset or a liability to our cause. I think you already know the answer to that. You spent like two billion to save me? I think you already know the answer to that. What can you tell me about this colony we're going to? Freedom's Progress? It's a typical human settlement in the Terminus systems. They had a small military force for protection supplemented by mechs and security drones. Average in almost every way, really. Completely unremarkable. Until the disappearance. Any idea what we'll find? Any thoughts on what we might run into there? A lot of empty buildings and one giant mystery. <laughs> Tell me a little about yourself. Worried about my qualifications? I can crush a mech with my biotics or shoot its head off at a hundred yards. Take your pick. I wanted more than a resume. Where'd you train? Did you and Jacob serve together in the Alliance? No. The elusive man recognized my potential and I like her boots. at a young age. How old were you? Old enough to know this is what I wanted. Dang. <laughs> I like how she cuts to the chase, though. She does sound jealous. Let's face it, choose. You want all the smoke. <laughs> Two billion to revive an A55. Surprise. <laughs> 200 billion, sorry. Okay, Sorry's goodbye. You're not interested in talking. We've got an assignment. We can talk about it or we can do it. Dang. Should we talk to Jacob? Let's talk to Jacob. 
I'm glad the elusive man convinced you to join us, Commander. Those colonists need my help. I, I didn't join Cerberus. I'll reserve judgment. Cerberus gave me my body back. That's worth giving them a chance. One chance. One chance. But you're still not convinced. Do you trust me, Commander? <gasps> I do, though. I do trust him. Yes, I'm not sure, no. I, okay, secretly I trust Jacob, okay, but I'm gonna say no, cause ruthless. But I do, I trust him. I trust him the most out of everyone so far. <laughs> I should have a bit of an, she is an Aussie project. Yeah, we talked about this earlier. She is, her, the VA is an Aussie. And to consider part of that budget that went into custom butt sticker production, <laughs> the butt stickers. <laughs> this guy in Leo's name is an elusive man that I can't take these characters calling him that seriously. No. You're part of Cerberus. I'll be keeping an eye on you too. Fair enough. I can't expect you to trust me just because I ask you. I'll just have to earn that trust. Do you know anything about this colony we're going to? It's called Freedom's Progress. Don't know much else. I guess we'll find out when we get there. You said you served in the Alliance. Five years in total. Stationed all over the galaxy. Even spent a couple of years as a Corsair. I've never heard of the Corsairs. It was an Alliance initiative. They hired independent starship captains and used them for missions that fell outside official Alliance jurisdiction. Technically, we weren't part of the Alliance. If we ever got caught, they could disavow any knowledge of us. We were supposed to be free from restrictions and rules. There was still enough red tape to sink a cruiser. I finally just gave up. Why did you join Cerberus? I guess I just got tired of never making a difference. So much of what we did in the Alliance seemed pointless. I thought things would change after the attack on the Citadel. The old council was dead, and humanity took control of the new one. But nothing changed. Politics, bureaucracy, same bullshit, different leaders. Cerberus is different. When colonies go missing, we don't commission a team to write a report to figure out what the hell to do about it. We just go and find out. He's all about the action. That's all for now. Yes, ma'am. Racking up the renegade points already. Wowie. Okay, I'm going to save here and we will pick it back up from here.